Accusations of lying are not to be thrown around lightly, in general, or in matters of basketball gaming. To that point, in over two decades as part of the basketball gaming community, I've seen the word lie used when it really shouldn't be. There have been times when gamers have fumed, EA has lied to us, or 2K has lied to us, when in fact they've gotten their hopes up about something that was never promised, or they've misunderstood what was said during the previous season. Those aren't lies. However, there have definitely been times when previews and developer blogs have been, shall we say, misleading, to put it kindly. As someone who's been playing basketball video games and covering their previous seasons for more than 20 years, I've formed what I'd like to think is healthier skepticism towards developer blogs. It doesn't help that we have proof of developer blogs that, to be blunt, lied to us. Cast your minds back to 2017, when NBA 2K18 was being previewed. NBA 2K17 had been a smashing success, and rightfully so. NBA 2K18 was set to introduce a new motion system though, one that changed the feel of the gameplay, and for many of us, not for the better. Needless to say, the developer blogs told a different story. On the subject of the new motion system, play interactions and physicality, the blog said, quote, the interactions and logic for ball handlers on ball defender collisions were reworked and it feels much better. In NBA 2K18, if the ball handler can get a step on his man, or is a Westbrook or LeBron coming downhill, prepare to see a blow by for a clear drive to the hoop. It feels really good now to get your defender leaning one way, attacking his drag foot, and seeing your ball handler quickly swim by the defender without getting snatched into a heavy bump animation. Sure, the Kawhi Leonard's of the league can still clamp down slower ball handlers, but for the most part, you'll see a lot of hip riding this year compared to the knockbacks and dribble stuns from the past. If you find yourself matched up with an extra pesky hard-nosed defender, I recommend pulling off step-back moves from the rides. They're extremely deadly this year. The whole revamp of the one-on-one -on -one chess match really opens up the floor game and makes going to the basket with a playmaker much more realistic than before." End quote. When we got our hands on NBA 2K18, it's clear that wasn't the case. That isn't just a subjective point of view either. The following year, during the NBA 2K19 preview season, Mike Wong was interviewed by Game Informer. This particular snippet from that interview is particularly illuminating. It was embarrassing, Wong admits. There was a bug we didn't find until very, very late with the collision detection. That's another thing we're working on right now. We're spending a lot of time trying to make sure you can't just go through players and stopping them when you try to run into guys. The increase in hip riding that was presented as an improvement? Not quite as good as intended. Frequent blowbys being restricted to explosive players like LeBron James and Russell Westbrook? Not exactly. Collisions feeling much better? Nope. No thanks to that bug that was unfortunately discovered far too late into development. Now, video game development is harder than a lot of people think, and no release is going to be absolutely perfect. However, the issue here isn't perfection. It's about a developer insight that hyped up new tech that had some teething problems, something that was covered up at the time and then subsequently admitted to in the previews of the following game. That's not all that the previews for NBA 2K19 revealed about 2K18. In the NBA 2K18 developer blogs, the following statement was made about interior defense. Quote, You'll also notice that we significantly reduced the number of multi-actor layups in NBA 2K18, and that was intentional. It felt a bit in past games that you could get really good shot defense just by being there and getting pulled into a contact shot. This year, we wanted to make playing defense as a rim protector much more engaging, so the onus is now on the gamer to recognize guys attacking the rim and timing their shot blocks accordingly. End quote. It sounded promising on paper, though once again, NBA 2K18 didn't exactly deliver in that regard. And, once again, the Game Informer interview with Baluba revealed the truth. Interior defense was really rough last year, Wong says. When we went to the new motion system, we ended up taking out a lot of the multi-actor animations that we had in the past, so it made it really tough to protect the rim. That's why there were so many missed layups. It was kind of a band-aid to fix all that, because you could pretty much get them at will. That's a lot better now, and so is the hit detection of when you were actually covered and when you were not. In the NBA 2K18 developer blog, the removal of multi-actor layups was portrayed as an intentional move to improve interior defense. The Game Informer interview would reveal that those animations were removed with the shift to the new motion system, leaving interior defense, quote, really rough. That's not what we'd been told a year earlier. Those missed layups weren't in fact the result of improved interior defense, but a band-aid fix to ensure it wasn't even easier to score inside. Once again, the mention of issues with hit detection runs contrary to the promises made in the NBA 2K18 developer blog. In short, the gameplay blog for NBA 2K18 lied. Remember, that's not an accusation to be thrown around lightly, but it lied. The previews for NBA 2K19 demonstrate that. Now, some might say, of course they didn't admit to NBA 2K18 having those issues. They're trying to sell a game. And yeah, that's marketing 101. No one is expecting them to say, 
Actually, the new motion system didn't work out so well on the first go, but hey, buy the game anyway! It goes without saying that previews are trying to sell the game, but dishonesty is dishonesty, and it's asinine to try to justify it by saying, oh, that's just marketing. There's a difference between overselling improvements and presenting band-aid fixes for flaws and bugs as tech working as intended. It's not uncommon for previews of the upcoming game to throw last year's release under the bus, as it were. It's funny to look back at a game that was being hyped up, only for the following year's previews to essentially dump on it and say, nah, this year, this is the year. Admittedly, some of that is just overzealous marketing to hype up the new game. Taken at face value, it doesn't necessarily mean that the previous year's previews were being dishonest, just that this year, they've managed to exceed what they've done before. That is their goal, and it's what we want to see too. Except in the case of NBA 2K18 and NBA 2K19, it wasn't just that. We have an admission that touted improvements were in fact makeshift solutions for tech that wasn't ready for prime time. This of course came after a year of people being shouted down, and told they were wrong about their criticisms of NBA 2K18, that everyone always prefers last year's game, and other such apologist rhetoric. To that point, how many people came out and admitted they were wrong? How many people, especially influencers who work closely with 2K, talked about how that interview revealed how misleading the NBA 2K18 previews were? Yeah, not too many. And sure, part of the problem is access journalism and clout and all of that stuff, but as much as anything else, people forget, and they don't go back. They don't go back and make these vital comparisons. As an audience, as consumers, we don't go back often enough to compare games, and the way they were previewed, as part of our critique. We don't talk about the lies, or the promises that we've heard so many times before. Instead, anyone who suggests an old game was superior in any way is written off as just being nostalgic, an old head. And yes, nostalgia goggles are an issue at times, and that's often been noted, which is only fair. However, we can't forget about recency bias, which clouds our view and judgement just as much, if not more so at times. Speaking of forgetting what's been said before, in that NBA 2K19 Game Informer interview, Baluba also addressed the issue of the skill gap in this snippet. We have to make the game more about bringing back the skill gap, and making it about the users, the skill in the sticks to be successful, Wong says. It's all about matching your stick to where the guy's trying to get to. That's where we get the set-offs, the brick walls. You'll get blow if the guy's stick is the wrong way. Nothing wrong with that. Of course, the NBA 2K18 blog also promised a renewed focus on stick skills and the almighty skill gap. Quote, Last year I mentioned how much we focused on the skill of the gamer being king in deciding who wins and who loses. With NBA 2K18, that focus remained, but definitely evolved from last year. I think the main course of the evolution was defining what skill meant. Last year, NBA 2K17 put a very large focus on stick skills. And while that focus was good, it also took away from some of the aspects that traditionally make 2K gameplay so great. With shooting for example, last year we introduced shot aiming and put a heavy emphasis on shot timing deciding makes and misses. The unfortunate side effects to some of these changes were that it became very difficult for us to balance the stick skill gap between new users and pro gamers as well as across the various archetypes. So in many ways, it ended up devaluing player attributes, defensive impact and all of the other factors that go into shot success. So we took a step back and looked at the pros and cons of NBA 2K17 shooting system compared to how we've done things in past games and married the best ideas together to create a new system for 2K18. This year I think we've struck a great balance between the importance of stick skills and basketball IQ. So NBA 2K19 was about stick skills and skill gap, as was NBA 2K18, as was NBA 2K17, and so on. So look, there are passionate, knowledgeable and dedicated people working on the games. The developers want to give us the best games they possibly can. I do believe that. I also believe they don't want to be dishonest, but the games need to be sold, and sometimes a positive spin is more akin to deception, especially when something doesn't work out as well as planned. Video game development isn't easy. It's not like adding text to a Word document. With all due respect to modders and the wonderful things they've done, development is very different to tinkering with a finished product. But when you compare developer blogs year to year, and you see the same things being promised, and you see things that were touted as improvements when they aren't better, or when a supposed enhancement is revealed as a band-aid fix, it's impossible not to feel cynical and distrustful. No, not everything is a lie. Some things are as good as advertised. Other improvements may be overhyped somewhat, but are already noticeable and welcome. For legal reasons as much as anything else, I'm not saying that everything you see in developer blogs and previews is a lie. Still, that NBA 2K19 Game Informer interview was eye-opening. Or at least, it should have been. More than just throwing NBA 2K18 under the bus, or even overhyping the improvements that have been made in the space of a year, it revealed how deceptive previews can be. I mean, any long-time gamer who's followed a couple of previous seasons knows to take everything with a grain of salt and be aware of marketing spin and hype. In that respect, 
Developer blog isn't totally transparent or accurate is hardly a scoop. However, presenting such glaring issues and band-aid fixes as being desirable changes and great improvements is on a whole other level. Obviously, take what you see, hear and read during the previous season with that proverbial grain of salt. Approach any marketing, which developer blogs ultimately are, with healthy skepticism. Beyond that though, go back and make comparisons to last year's previews. Note the familiar promises and any touted improvements that are now being touted as shortcomings or stopgap solutions. Also, go back and play older titles and form your own hands on impressions. It can be quite revealing. Sometimes games get better, other times they take a step back. Developer blogs will only ever tell you that everything is always better and that's not always the case. NBA 2K18 was proof of that, as the NBA 2K19 previews openly admitted. No, I'm not saying that developer blogs and previews are always full of lies. But when they are misleading, they can be, let's say, very economical with the truth. Remember that, this and every preview season. And for those who still shill and deny this, or excuse it, shame on you. Your audience and fellow basketball gamers deserve better. And that's no lie.